today we are going to discuss Searle's notion of language and meaning. Language according to Searle is a biological phenomenon. It has evolved in this sense that as you all know Searle presupposes two scientific theories. One is the evolutionary biology and another is the atomic theory of matter. Now, following this scientific presuppositions, Searle argues that intentionality is a pre linguistic feature, whereas language is an later evolute. Language is not prior to intentionality. In this sense, Searle tries to talk about the concept of language and linguistic activities. He tries to show that the language world relationship is an intentional re relationship. It is governed by the principle of intentionality. The intentional attitude of language use, which is seen as a kind of a social phenomenon, language use is a kind of a social activity. Now, this social activity presupposes that there is a mind and this mind is intentional and the intentional feature of mind not only articulates the linguistic expressions, but also tries to show that how meaning is embedded in the intentional structure of mental states. Now, it is in this connection Searle tries to tell us that the language world relationship, the sense reference relationship, the content and the reference relationship is intentionally defined. Searle of course, tells us that this intentional connection between language and the world is a causal connection. So, in this case one need not understand that the causal connection that Searle talking about is like the causal connection that Fodor and Chomsky would talk about. Since Sal talks about mental causations and this mental causation is intentionalized in the case of biological naturalism, we need to see how does Sal explain to us the language world relationship. So, in this context I would like to talk about Sal's notion of language. Now, from evolutionary point of view there is an order of priority. It is this priority that I was talking about how intentionality evolves and then we find the evolution of language. So, intentionality is prior to language, the priority in the development of biological processes. So, there is an order of priority in the development of intentional phenomena. If language is embedded in the structure of mental states or intentional states, then this structuring looks for a kind of a logical priority or the structuring demands a kind of a logical priority in order to show that how intentionality helps in explaining the structure. In the development of language and meaning comes very late. So, according to Searle, human being is a linguistic being, human beings is a conscious being, a biological being. Now, all these features of the individual human beings are something which is 
unique. Now, intentionality is not unique in the case of a, a biological human being. The biological system produces intentional features. If that is the hypothesis, then all biological entity would have intentionality. So, intentionality as an intrinsic feature of consciousness or as an intrinsic feature of human mind is a common feature to all biological beings, but human intentionality is different from animal intentionality from the intentionality of the plants and insects. You would see that in our you know later lectures. So, what is important today is to talk about that when we say that language world are intentionally connected, we just like to tell us that this relationship presupposes intentionality. Okay. So, in so in, in that sense we need to see how intentionality helps us explaining the structure of mental states and its relationship, its linguistic features and relationship with the world. Now, since meaning is a part of the mind according to Searle, this relationship that the relationship between meaning and mind has to be understood very carefully precisely because for him language is one of the basic institutions that human intentionality has formed and it is through the language or the linguistic content, the intentional content, we relate how it is part of experience and understanding. Meaning is not there in the mind. I said meaning is related to experience and understanding and therefore, it is related to the mental life. There is an internal relationship found in the case of Searle's analysis of the meaning. So, so, in that context when we talk about linguistic activities, the activities which are characterized as a mental activities, what we try to show is this that that linguistic activities. So, for example, thinking, desiring, intending etcetera are part of experience and understanding. So, in that sense there is an internal connection. Now, intentionality as we have discussed earlier which is a feature of directedness, we have also pointed out in the last session that Sal talks about two different kinds of representations, the mental representation on the one hand and the linguistic representation on the other. But Sal tries to show us that language is connected in a sense connected to the mind language is connected to the mind. Now, this connection as I said it is an intentional connection to say that what kind of representation happens when we talk about language use. We say there is a linguistic representation. When we say that 
the structure of linguistic representation and the structure of mental states are connected and these structures are some sense symmetrical in nature and that is precisely because the intentional content of these structures are same. So, when we say I am thinking or the thought a particular thought or a mental states like desire, I desire to have glass of water. Now, this having a glass of water would we'll talk about or the want to have a glass of water would we'll talk about how this thought is being expressed in language. When I express this in language, I certainly convey meaning to you. The expression conveys meaning to the hearer. If the contents are different, then what I think and what I say will not match. So, the mismatch between the thinking and saying or expressing the desire, there will be chaos. So, in that sense, shall try to tell us that the content is expressed in language and this intentional content is pre linguistic phenomenon and it is expressed in language. So, language for Sal is a institutions, okay. it is one of the institutions. There are several other institutions like family is an institution, governance is another institution. Now, this, all these institutions are formed by certain rules and Sal says that these are constitutive rules. Now, the constitutive rules has a kind of a logical form that is x is defined as y in the context c. In other words, we try to see x as y in a particular context. I will come back to that point, when Sal talks about two different kinds of rules that governs our linguistic activities. One is the constitutive rules and another is the regulative rules, but before that we need to be very clear that the realm of the mental and the realm of the linguistic are two different realms. So, Sal therefore, talks about the communicative intention, the intention to share the meaning that is what is being intended by the speaker is different from the mere intention of expression. So, there are two things one is in the case of a linguistic representation a mere rep linguistic representation minus communicative intention is something very insignificant when it talks about language use. So, for example, when I am walking on the street and there is nobody around I just say something if I say that I want a glass of water very loudly, it make no sense, because I am not intending to communicate to somebody that I want a glass of water or rather I am just loudly speaking out my thought, but if there is somebody there is a hearer around me or there is a possibility that somebody would hear my desire and I am feeling very thirsty 
and I also expect that he would respond to my expression. Then that kind of state of affairs will talk about what Sell calls a communicative intention. So, the communicative intention or the representational intention are two different kinds of intentions. So, the embedded in the structure of thoughts, the intentionality which is embedded in the structure of thought or mind is a kind of intentionality which only has a what you call a representational intention. It has representational intention, whereas in the case of intention to communicate the things, we talk about communicative intention. Okay. So, the intentionality operates in two different realms. So, two aspects of meaning intentions communicating according to Searle is a method of producing effect on one's hearers, but one can intend to represent something without caring at all about the effects of the hearer. Now, this is, is a very significant remark where Searle tries to tell us that this desire to communicate something is significant and it is significant in this sense that it shows that how I must behave in a social, in a public space. Whereas, if I say that I am just thinking, I need, I need not express my thought. A mere thinking would talk about a kind of intention, what shall calls the representation intentions, where I am not really thinking of the possibility of saying certain things to others. I am ruling out that possibility. I am just thinking. So, there that is also possible, but the moment I try to speak out my thoughts, I am very much consciously involved in saying what I am thinking and I must mean what I say. So, that connection between saying and meaning it is a very important intentional connection that Searle is referring to. Searle further says that when we define speaker's meaning in terms of forms of intentionality that are not intrinsically linguistic, if for example, we can define meaning in terms of intentions, we will be defined a linguistic notion, even though many perhaps the most human intentions are linguistically realized. So, all human intentions are linguistically realized. They are linguistically realized in this sense. So, when you talk about realizations, we must understand what is a mental state and what are other mental states that it is connected to. Say, for example, if I have a desire, now this desire is connected to various other desires. If it is desire, say, desire 1 and desire. 3 or it is related to some kind of a belief. No? Now, this is a kind of a criss crossing relationship and that kind of network. What shall means is this that you might have seen in his book Intentionality, an essay in philosophy of mind. The book that I am referring to is this talks about network of mental states. Now, Searle makes a distinction between network and background. Now, background is a non-representational power or ability, a non-representational mental ability, whereas the mind or the mental life includes 
various mental states, various kinds of mental states, though we mostly refer to desire, beliefs, intentions, etcetera, but there are several other kinds of mental states which are intentionally connected to one another. Now, this intentional connections or what we shall call there is a conceptual connection. Now, in this network of mental states, I have already mentioned in my previous lectures that some mental states are unconscious mental states and some are conscious. Say for example, I am conscious of this desire, desire to have a glass of water. Now, if I am conscious of this and I am at present not conscious of various other kinds of desires that I have, what shall say is this that the all other desires that I am not conscious of now are potentially conscious mental states. So, this idea that to have desire and to express that a desire and also believe that somebody would bring a glass of water, there is a possibility that somebody would bring me a glass of water. So, I believe that, I believe that there is a hearer who would hear and there is a hearer and who would listen to my expression and bring a glass of water to me. So, I believe the speaker believes certain things that is why he is intended to speak or express his desire. So, the intention of expressing the desire is something which talks about beliefs, there are separate beliefs. I believe that there is a glass or there is a pot and the hearer would go rush to the pot or there is a pond, the hearer would rush to the pond, fill the pot, fill the glass and bring it to me. So, there is a hell sort lot of you know, possibilities, possible beliefs are connected. So, there is a network of mental states and one mental state is realized with relation to various other mental states. So, in, in that sense the linguistic realizability is connected to the mental. As you remember Sal's basic hypothesis is that mental states are caused by brain processes and realized in brain processes. So, whenever something is being caused, so that is where it has also creates a kind of a possibility for realizing that. So, Sal is very particular about this, Sal is very explicitly mentioning this to us. Now, on this approach the philosophy of language is a branch of philosophy of mind. Now, this is one statement one we need to little be clear about in the when Sal wrote speech acts in late 60s, he made it very clear that philosophy of action is a branch of philosophy of language and speech act is a special kind of act, is a special kind of action. To say something is to perform an action. So, now he is saying that philosophy of language is a branch of philosophy of mind. So, he is connecting three things action, language, mind, then one can read further this quotation and in its most general form it amounts to the view that certain fundamental notions such as meaning are analyzable in terms of more psychological notions such as beliefs, desires and intentions. So, meaning is not exclusively a kind of a social phenomenon, it is 
also related to the mind. Hence, there are many psychological states that are involved and that are involved in producing the expression and realizing that. Now, I did not talk about the background. The background is an ability, is a power to cause the representation. It is through background the mind is able to represent things. So, mental states are representational in this way because there is a non representational ability. There is a non representational ability. Background is not itself representational, but it makes representation possible. According to Searle, this background capacity or ability is there in our head. He does not characterize it as a mental. He said it is a kind of a biological ability. It is a kind of a dispositional ability, but I must tell you this that he is not a behaviorist saying that mental states can be defined in terms of dispositions, but he says it is there in every biological being the very power to represent certain things, the power to do certain things. It is that biological power for Searle is a kind of a non representational power which makes the representation possible. So, the possibility of forming the network of mental states or representational states is possible due to a background condition. Then Searle of course, says that background is not only physical, but there is a cultural background particularly in the intentionality book. So, now let us further talk about the structure of intention and expressions. Intentional states expressed in the performance that is the intention to perform that. So, what is important for us today that there is the speaker intend to speak. So, the intention to speak something or express that is intention to express something talks about how the structure is formed. So, there is an intentional structure formed here, when we talk about the intentionality of saying and meaning it or performing a kind of a speech act. When you talk about speech act or expression we must say that how these expressions are intentionally structured. The intentional states are representational states and these representational states if P is an intentional state and P will have some content in it. Being an intentional state it must have a content, the content which expresses that it is about something. If P has an intentional content, it is that content which refers to the reference okay, or which signifies that a reference or establish a kind of a connection you know, with the reference. So, in, in that sense there is a structure involved. Now, I have already talked about the symmetry in the structure. Let me 
read out to you one of the quotations from Searle's intentionality. He says, the fact that condition of satisfaction of the expressed intentional states and the condition of such speech act are identical suggests that the key of the problem of meaning is to see that in the performance of speech act, the mind intentionally imposes the condition of satisfaction of the mental states as the production of physical phenomena. So, speaking is a physical activity, but the intention to speak, the very desire to express, when I say the desire has a intentionality. I must tell you this that when I use this term intentionality, which is a very technical term, I have already expressed earlier that intention, desire, beliefs, all these mental states have intentionality. Intentionality is a feature, intentionality means directedness. So, the desire to have water has a kind of a directedness. Now, when it is expressed, it is expressed is a kind of a physical action, but there is a mode in which a particular statement is being made and Sal calls is the psychological mode. The psychological mode talks about the condition of satisfaction. So, there is not only a kind of a directedness involved between an expression or a proposition having a content, but there is also a kind of a psychological mode in which a particular statement is told, is expressed to the hearer. And that is what is bringing what is what is all called the condition of of satisfaction. Now, the condition of satisfaction talks about how the statement is to be met. So, for example, if I am making a request, then I would say please can you bring a glass of water to me, but if I give an order please bring me a glass of water or I just say give me a glass of water things like that. Now, these tones, the ways a statement is made according to sir are very important, important to analyze the concept of meaning, because there is an hearer who would respond to these statements, who is connected to what you are expecting. If I feel that if I give an order, the hearer would not listen, then I need to be polite and make a kind of a request please. But if I am giving an order, I have this sense of authority with me that yes, say for example, in the court, the judge says order, order is enough to suggest that silence is to be maintained. Now, it is that kind of authority. So, the, the speaker demands some kind of a status or maintains some kind of status and the authority is imposed in the expression or the performing a kind of an action, just making hammering the table, it is enough. He not just say order, order just two hammering are enough for a judge to express that 
silence to be maintained in the courtroom. So, in that sense, we are imposing a kind of a condition of satisfaction. Okay. It is not only having just directedness, but there is a condition of satisfaction involved in it. So, we need to look at that. Now, there is another notion which has been very typical to language use, particularly the notion of meaning is that the notion of self referentiality. Self so, says when you say certain things, saying would tell us how the reach a kind of a direction of fit how there is a kind of a direction of fit from mind to the world calls the mind to the world direction of fit and when it is a self referential kind of thing then there will be world to the mind. So, mind to the world and world to the mind bring a glass of water or please bring me a glass of water would reach to the hearer and there is a kind of a thing happening it brings out some kind of change in the existing state of affairs. Somebody rush to the pot and get me a glass of water. So, when the hearer fetches a glass of water for me, there is a world to mind direction, there is an intentional connection between world to the mind. This what Sal calls a kind of self referential connection. So, the direction fit is in two ways, one mind to the world and world to the mind. So, once that kind of intentional connections are possible, then we talk about self referentiality, self referentiality of intentionality. Linguistic activities are conscious activities in this sense, because it has been consciously realized. When you say you expect, now when these expectations are fulfilled, you have what you call satisfaction, you experience the satisfaction by consuming the glass of water when somebody is thirsty. So, that is what is being you know case where linguistic activities are conscious activities, because you not only say something, but also mean it and realize what you are being said. But there is also a kind of a as I pointed out earlier, there is also a kind of a social structure in which meaning is placed. The social meaning structure signifies the social institution of intentionality. So, for example, how a request is to be made. So, when you talk about request or order, all this the request has to be made in a particular way. That is the manner in which a request is to be pointed out, that is the manner in which request is to be expressed. So, this art of expression or expressing something according to Searle is a rule governed activities. Now, how these rules are formed? Searle talks about constitutive rules and regulative rules. Now, how the rules are formed? The basic thing is that Searle says 
a rule is formed with the help of intentionality. What kind of intentionality? A rule is not formed by only one individual's intentionality, rather it is formed by a kind of a collective intentionality. So, every conditions request or promise, no? how a promise statement has to be made. So, this, this tells us that human intentionality is very fundamental and basic to the formation of constitutive rules, which says x where we understand x as x as y in the context c. So, particular expression has to be understood in, in the form of say request or order in a particular context and that is the speciality and that can happen at the kind of a in the social realm. The, the normative condition, it is that normative condition that makes an expression request that makes an expression order. So, the form of request, the form of order are normatively different. There are two different forms in this sense, the way they have been articulated that is different. The way the request has been articulated, the way an order has been articulated, the way the promise has been articulated are they are articulated in three different ways. The form of these expressions are decided with the help of a collective intentionality. I will speak about collective intentionality and what kind of ontology the social will have if language is a kind of a social institutions, what kind of ontology this language use is having that we will discuss Sarl has very profound things to tell us about the notion of social ontology. But so far as language is concerned, he says that social meaning structure signifies the social institution of intentionality that is how intentionality is operating in the social realm that is important. So, the pre linguistic form of intentionality refers to the background that is how the background is making things possible. Now, when you talk about rules and following the rules, once the rules are made then the rules are having certain power that is the regulative power of the rules. All rules have certain regulative power. When an individual follows a rule, he follows this unconsciously, meaning thereby Sarl is very much Wittgensteinian in this sense uh, that I just follow the rule that is to say this is how I use language, this is how a promise is made, this is how the request is made. So, I have been being part of the social I know that this is how things are. 
So, that is the kind of an unconsciously following the rule. It is natural that we express promise in this way or request in this way. It is natural that we express promise in a particular manner and a request in another manner. So, in that sense, Sal says rules are unconsciously followed. One need not assume or interpret that there are rules in the mind and these rules are in the unconscious mind and one is following the rules. Now, salt thesis does not make that kind of claim, rather he would tell you this that we have learned the social etiquettes and so many varieties of language use being part of the linguistic community. So, this very fact that human beings have a linguistic form of life shows how these rules are formed. The very fact that human beings have a linguistic form of life and they participate in a ling various linguistic form of forms of life shows it tells us that how these rules are formed. Now, when we explain this, Sal says this question can be answered with reference to the notion of collective intentionality. How the individuals together have formed culture, how those individual together have formed many normative principles that makes the culture possible. So, in that sense he is talking about a possibility of formulating a logical possibility of formulating various constitutive rules. It is logically possible precisely because the human consciousness tries to see things as something. X, has, X can be viewed as something in a particular context. This very possibility of imagining certain things in a particular context as something gives us an impression of making constitutive rules. So, in that sense Sal talks about how the constitutive rules are formed and language is expressed and used in a social context. We will talk more about it in the next session. Thank you.